What you gonna do with Terrence again? Beat his bitch ass up. And somebody sexually harasses you in a manner that is very vulgar and disgusting. Way a little bit before me, and I was just like, it doesn't make sense. I'm not gonna do this without her because mm -hmm. it was us. If you're dating and you become a mistress of someone, then be a mystery. Mm -hmm. You do that. Uh, free and AJ. Free also drove and BET behind that week. Please stand by for our sponsor. So if you guys are looking for a new or used car near you in your area, please be sure to relate to my link in my description down below. Search up your zip code and you might find new or used cars near you that you might not even find on Craigslist. So check out Car Marshall. Some viewers may find this disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. Hey my loves. It's Destin Choice and you're watching Choice TV. Now today I'm back with another docu. You guys love my first docu I did on one-on-one, -on -one, the truth about why it ended and the behind the scenes tea. And a lot of you guys kept blowing me up asking me to do another one. So I decided to ask you guys which docu you guys wanted me to cover next. You guys asked me to cover why the game ended, College Hill, My Wife and Kids, and my favorite once is apart. And of course, Once is a Park got the most votes. So I'm going to cover Once is a Park, the truth about why the show really ended. And you know, I really feel like Once is a Park, this needs to happen. Because in case you guys didn't know, as of this week, it is now 19 years since the show first aired. And Once is a Park had its last episode four years ago. I'm going to be going down to the nitty gritty, to the good, the ups, the downs. Basically everything about why the show really ended. Because it's so crazy how abruptly AJ and Free Love... Abruptly, Roxy and Terrence were replaced, and then out of nowhere, the show just ends. And Once in the Park is really important to me, and it has a special place in a lot of our hearts, and that's basically our childhood. And it's a shame that a lot of kids these days won't be able to even experience it. Once in the Park was just a golden era. It was the era where everybody just came home after school, and you just sit down, kick back, and just watch Once in the Park at 4, 5 p.m., 6 p.m., and it was just a good time to watch it with your family and your friends. I remember when I was younger, I used to hate Once in the Park. And I remember my cousin used to take the remote from me and be like, Oh my God, Roxy and Terrence. Oh my God, AJ and Free. Turn them once in the park. And I used to be very annoyed. And then eventually, I'd grown to love the show because it had all my favorite celebrity guests. With the fur crack on how rich we would be to get about this hood was like a fantasy. Now you the cold without you, but I'm hurting while I'm with you. It had all the new music videos, and it basically gave you something to kill time while you do your homework. And as far as the downfall of Once in the Park, many, 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 many people are blamed for the downfall of the show. True story. It's your turn. <laughs> and why it really ended behind the scenes. So here's everything that went down. One of the Park was created by Vice President of BET at the time, Stephen G. Hill. Stephen was responsible for music programming, specials, and promotion for the BET network. He first got his start at a young age, working for a radio station in his hometown. He then eventually got hired at MTV working behind the scenes. He got his big break when BET hit him up and decided to give him a job. And it, and it did grow quickly because there was a starvation for that type of entertainment. Uh, on television. Stephen Hill's really significant to black culture because his work on BET changed the tone of the whole damn network. He's responsible for the creation of many BET specials, like the BET Awards, many reality shows, the Hip Hop Awards, and the New Edition movie, and last but not least, One of Us in Park. Back in the day before we had World Star Hip Hop, The Shade Room, YouTube, everyone came to BET to hear about black culture, black news, and black musicians because other platforms were a little bit whitewashed, if you know what I mean. BET used to showcase black excellency and painted black people in an amazing light. Back in the day, young black people had barely any representation in the media. And when BET came along, teens had shows like Hits from the Streets, Teen Summit. Many teens out here today are smoking marijuana. Um, I think teens are smoking marijuana because of peer pressure. And once you're hooked on it, you can't get off of it. I'm posse member Maya Harrison, and that's the word on the street. 
A few years into working at BET, Stephen Hill got inspiration to create 106 in part because music TV shows were at its prime back in the day. It seemed like everywhere you turned, there was a huge mega countdown show. And back then, there was no high-speed internet. If you wanted to watch a video online, you would literally have to wait like 40 minutes for some shit to load. Back in the day, to watch music videos, we had MTV TRL with Carson Daly, Rhapsody, VH1's Top 20 Countdown, and of course, some of you guys might remember this if you're not too young, Cedar. Just gonna make sure that thing works. The pill? <laughs> pill ain't got nothing on them. They should bring some of them kids into the high school, along with the condoms. You know what I'm saying? Stephen came up with the idea of a live TV show where they play 90% of the music videos. Unlike TRL, TRL only played 40 seconds of the video, which isn't really shit. Stephen pitched the idea to BET, and BET loved it, and they eventually pursued it. Once the Park first aired on 9-11-2000, a year before the terrorist attack in New York City. The show got its name because it was originally produced in Harlem, New York City, and the title of the show is derived from the original studio location at East 106th Street Park Avenue. 106 Park showcased artists of color from all genres and gave them a platform to promote their music, perform their music to the world on live television. 106 mainly targeted young black teens and featured a top 10 countdown. The countdown featured songs that the fans voted and requested to be played on TV. And every week, they featured a new song called A New Joint. So regardless if you didn't like Once in the Park, yo ass had to watch Once in the Park if you wanted to see that new Aaliyah music video or that new Chingy music video. What happened to Chingy, by the way? That's another video. If you want to sit up here and say that you weren't a fan of Once in the Park, most likely you're lying or you probably had no fucking cable and you're just a hater. The show's original hosts were AJ Calloway and Marie Wright, aka Free, until July 28, 2005 when they quit the show, which I'll get into that in a little bit. Free and AJ basically made the show a hit. They built the show from the ground up. At first, since it was a black show, people looked at it as a knockoff TRL, a knockoff Top 20 Countdown, or a bootleg Rhapsody. People just weren't gravitating to it at first. And then within months, 106 and Park became BET's most viewed show. Pete, I, that's AJ, they call me free. There's Eminem at number two with, without me. Come on. Yeah. Oh, you probably didn't know that. Do you dance like he did? Are you are you very much like Elvis? I try. Huh. You want to show us what you do? Honestly, <laughs> right, yo. let's talk about what Free and AJ were doing before One Assistant Park. Before One Assistant Park, Free was very known in the music industry. She traveled the world as a dancer and she got her big break in 1991 when she appeared in Marky Mark's music video and number one song, Good Vibration. Free went through a lot of trouble growing up and she didn't really make it too far in the music industry. Yo. A couple years later, she got word about an audition that BET was holding for a new show called 106. AJ Calloway before 106 the Park was an event planner. He owned a restaurant and was a huge party host in New York City. Let's go back a little bit. How did you get your job on, on 106 and Park and BET? He auditioned. I, yeah, well, <laughs> I was an event planner. I did parties all over the city. Right. I had New York locked down. A lot of people don't know that. You had a restaurant too. I had, a, I had a lot of things going on. Basically. No, I did events all over New York City. Um, BET was moving into New York, and actually a good friend of mine out of Chicago, y'all might know him, George Daniels. Yeah, George absolutely. is the one who hooked me up with the BET people, said, yo, if y'all gonna be in New York, you need to know this guy, AJ. They they asked me to audition for uh, 106 and Park. Hey. I did that tape, mm -hmm. and they liked it, and then I did a test with Free, and literally about two and a half weeks later, I was on 106 and Park. It blew TRL off the charts just after three months and became the highest rated live teen show of the 2000s. AJ and Free were like the cool kids at school that everybody wanted to have lunch with, wanted to sit with, wanted to kick it with, wanted to party with. They were black, attractive, and even though they were in their 30s, AJ and Free carried themselves very, very well and had young spirits. No doubt, AJ and Free gave us some of the most memorable OMG moments. Like when Eminem and Free kissed on stage that one time. What a kiss. Give me a kiss back. Oh. I'm so not afraid of you, Ed. Ooh. <laughs> and she grabbed his lips oh with her hand. Oh, goodness. Ooh. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> you we didn't hurt her, man. Give it up for Eminem, y'all. 
Or the time Hattie Berry came on the show to promote Catwoman. Now you gotta give them the purr that you do in a movie, cause you know what you do in that movie. Let's go, let's go, let's go. <laughs> Catwoman purr. <laughs> the pressure. You can do it. <laughs> Halle Berry up. Or that one time B2K went public about going broke. Discussed on the phone the rumors about financial issues with you all and saying the money wasn't coming up right when you were doing tours and stuff. What exactly, can you elaborate on what happened or how deep it went? Yeah, we give you two examples. Scream Tour 2, Scream Tour 3, but we didn't make any money. Not one and penny. You, and when you say you didn't make any money, like what do you mean you didn't make any money to we, us? We, we did three months of touring. In total, we did six months of touring and didn't receive one percent of a penny. We didn't receive a dime. And last but not least, the time where they had that infamous interview with Aaliyah. Basically, in case you guys didn't know, AJ and Free interviewed Aaliyah, and that was Aaliyah's last interview. Of gold, give it up, y'all, for Aaliyah. It's so good on the yeah. countdown. Then we gotta know what the next video is, and I hope you say this is a song I love. Yes, <laughs> it is, it's rock the boat. Yes, it's rock the boat. Yeah. Now, when can um, we expect that? I, I shoot the video tomorrow, as a matter of fact. Okay. The show had fun segments weekly, like Wild Out Wednesday, where contestants would compete in dance-offs, and Freestyle Fridays, where two aspiring rappers would battle for 30 seconds, and they weren't allowed to use explicit language or sexually suggested language. Once in the Park was about about the most culturally impactful music show of all time. Some of our favorite black artists, like Bow Wow, from Ashanti, Destiny Childs, yes, I said Destiny Childs, wouldn't have gotten the support they needed if it wasn't for the support of Once Upon a Park. I remember, I remember as a kid watching the premiere of Jay-Z and Kanye's new song. I remember as a kid I was watching Soulja Boy's new song, Yeah. I remember as a kid I was watching the premiere of Nicki Minaj's Hello, Good Morning. Every time I see a clip of Once Upon a Park, I just get chills and goosebumps because it reminds me, and I feel like it takes all of us back to when we were all kids watching it because it plays a really big role in our childhood. It's almost as if AJ and Free or Roxy and Terrence raised a lot of us. AJ and Free were so poppin' that they made appearances on hit movies like Drumline. During the show, Free was pursuing her music career and worked with many artists like White Clef, Kanye West, Busta Rhymes, and Faith Evans, and even the Ying Yang Twins. Free even released a mixtape titled Freeze World in 2003. Once Park became popular amongst kids of all backgrounds and brought diversity to the forefront for a while, and even back in the day, because black men and black women were having trouble building a music following because platforms like MTV, VH1 didn't want to interview or support them until they made it mainstream. Before the rise of the internet, networks like MTV and VH1 had a lot of racial bias, if you know what I mean. Yep, sounds about white. Unless you were Jackson 5, you more than likely weren't getting much play on MTV or VH1 back then and now. If you weren't Michael Jackson, if you weren't Prince, and if you weren't Mariah Carey, you more than likely were not getting any play or any attention in the media if you were an upcoming black artist. I mean, occasionally they would dibble and dabble in black culture. I mean, we had people like Gwen Stefani and Justin Timberlake who were two mega culture vultures. But that's another video. Once in the Park gave us exactly what we didn't even realize was missing in music culture. Once in the Park gave us diversity. They gave us blackness. They gave us edgy hip hopness. You know, I remember when they used to always play, you know, Ludacris. They supported Ludacris when he was first up and coming. They supported, you know, Chingy. They support, supported Hurricane Chris, Soldier Boy when he was up and coming. You know, they pushed a lot of people to the forefront and they're responsible for a lot of people's success. So, People don't even realize how influential and important Wilson Park was because without it, a lot of your faves wouldn't be where they are today. Everything was doing so well and Free and AJ had a squeaky clean image overall. They are basically like our TV mom and dad. Until 2004, a scandal came out of nowhere back in 2004 and a scandal basically came out that Free was allegedly sleeping with Jay-Z and she allegedly got pregnant with Jay-Z. 
This was a big deal back in 2004, and the whole world was talking about it. Magazines were talking about it, blogs were talking about it, before blogs were on the rise, though. And the reason why it was so big, because back in 2004, Jay-Z and Beyonce had just confirmed their relationship at the 2004 VMAs. And since they just confirmed their relationship, the whole media was talking about them every chance they got. So, since the media was constantly talking about Jay-Z and Beyonce, the media quickly gravitated to this story and many news sites picked it up. The reason the scandal was so big because many people caught Jay-Z and Free together numerous times. So many of the fans also felt like Free was starting to gain a little bit of weight. So people started to su suspect that Free might have been pregnant. Well, this is the part did address that allegation and they did deny it. But that didn't keep people from believing it. I don't know why Melissa Park is speaking for free, as if free doesn't know her own poom poom better than herself. But they were speaking for free and they addressed it. And the reason why Melissa addressed it was because they wanted free fired. Many people wanted free fired because they felt like she was a home wrecker. But many people just were not here for free during that entire scandal. The whole world was talking about it. And it made matters even worse. The capital P built that as lady, Wendy Williams, Wendell Williams was talking about it. And she basically reported it on her huge, massive platform, her radio station, back in the day. Thank you. But I just got this note from Nicole, who's my right arm back there in the office. Free gave birth Monday. 50 and Jay-Z was there. She gave birth in Brooklyn at Methodist Hospital. Who do we shout out to? Oh, hell. Beyonce. Oh. <laughs> what you gonna do now, B? Yeah. What? Today. No, but she's gonna be talking about whether she's pregnant on Oprah. She damn sure is not gonna talk about whether her fiance or boyfriend or whatever, you know, planted one in the next broad. <laughs> damn. Was it a boy or a girl? Oh, or twins. <gasps> oh. I try to bust a nut, he bust a nut. Oh. The heir to the throne is Free's child. Well, girl, you just gave birth to your golden ticket. Mm -hmm. Ow. Jonathan Plummer lips. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of women think things look bleak after 30. Some women think, think they, things look bleak after 35. Look at Free, 37. Still looks fabulous. She will snap back into shape. And if she doesn't, she's got the money for the best plastic surgeries in the world. You know why? She's given birth to the prince. Yes. She gave birth to the heir. B. Oh. You'll give birth to the spare. Oh. Congratulations, free honey. I know your feet is swollen. It'll be a minute before you get back to them fly boots and shoes you used to wear on that show, 106 in Park. Although there was no footage of Free or pictures of Free being at the hospital, many fans confirmed that they saw uh, Jay-Z at a hospital and walking in and out of a room. So many fans called into Wendy Williams' show and confirmed her story. One minute sign. Let's oh. go to Jerry on line seven. Yeah. Sisters in the same hospital is free. Uh, Jerry? Yes. Jerry? Yes. All right. What's going on over there at the hospital? Uh, my sister gave birth on the same day that free gave birth to. Oh! 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 No! She, she's in about, um, she's in about two rooms down from free. Two rooms down! And um, Jay-Z was in a side blue. He was in a sky blue um, cashmere sweater. No! No! They, had, um, they had a baby boy. No! 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 Yes, and um, he was. Are you room. sure it was Jay Z and Free and not maybe yes. one of Jay? No, it was Jay Z. Oh! Lord, I guess your sister got no attention because everybody was trying to look in on freeze room, huh? Yeah, but um, my sister had a lot of attention too because she gave triplets. <gasps> triplets! Oh! Wow! Yeah. Wow! Wow! wow. Congratulations yeah. to your sister. But um, okay, back to free. 
So he was in the room all night with her, and uh, <sighs> he had like a little entourage, about two or three people with him. And um, he stayed all night in the ho- in, in the hospital with her, and um, you know they were very happy and talking and stuff. Every time I passed by, he was right at her bedside, holding her hand, and they had a beautiful baby boy. Oh, God, they were taking know. pictures on the on the ward and all that kind of stuff. Who are some of the famous people? Perhaps if there were any that came by to say hi? No. Oh my gosh. The sad part is, Jay-Z's team never addressed it. Beyonce never addressed it. And Free never addressed it. People even wanted Free to address her issue and address her pregnancy, her alleged pregnancy, which has never been proven on the show. As far as we all know, if you do your research, Free doesn't have any children as far as we know. Who knows? The situation could be true. It probably isn't true. But as far as we know, it's never been confirmed that there's no proof. So we don't have a choice but to believe that it's not true. Jay-Z never talked about it, but he did eventually address it in 2006 in his song, Trouble. In 2006, in Jay-Z's song, Trouble, he says, So I ain't gonna make a move unless I got a plan B. That'll happen the day I have a baby by free. Not to say that anything is wrong with free. Just to say that ain't nothing wrong with me. If my hand's in the cookie jar, no one thing, I'm going to take the cookie, not leave my ring. If my hand's in the cookie jar, no one thing, I'm going to take, ha, 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 Y'all know what I mean. So that was probably the biggest scandal of 2004. And eventually, people did forget and people did let it go. So fast forward to 2005, everything was doing fine, everything was doing well, until things started to go downhill for AJ and Free on Wilson's in part. In 2005, everything came crashing down because Free started to be absent way too often. She was working on her music career at the time, but her absence on the show was way too frequent. And many fans started to notice and realize that Free was missing. Because Free was constantly on the show, she was barely absent, and out of nowhere, she just stopped showing up. Many people didn't mind it and just thought Free was probably homesick or Free was probably raising Jay-Z's secret child, allegedly. Until 2005, AJ out of nowhere abruptly said, crying on the last episode. Some of y'all remember that episode. I never got a chance to watch it, but some of y'all might have remembered it. And if you do remember it, please comment what you remember. But as far as what I've read, and as far as pictures that I found, I could not find the video on the internet at all, because sadly the internet wasn't on the rise, so nobody thought to fucking screen record that shit. So I can't see the episode. But apparently AJ was on the couch crying tearfully, and it took him basically like 10 minutes to spit it out. And long story short, he basically said on live television that he would no longer be returning. The entire audience was flabbergasted and was like sighing the whole time because people were so confused. There was no warning. There was no, oh, you know, we're going to leave in a couple of months. Oh, you know, free quit. It was out of nowhere. And plus, the weird thing about this last episode AJ was in was free wasn't there. It was like, okay, this is the last episode. Where the fuck is free? Like, where is free? And there was also a rumor floating around that the reason free felt like she didn't want to show up was because she was developing a diva ego. So people were just like, wow, like Free just left AJ hanging and she just let him on the show and the show like that. Although AJ did call her on the phone and he did call in and he put it on speaker so everybody could hear and Free and AJ both said that it was over and they will not be returning. That episode aired on Thursday, July 28th, 2005. A lot of rumors circulate that the reason that Free left the show was because she was a diva and it was also reported many times that Stephen offered them more money and a bigger deal, but they turned it down. A source close to Stephen said the reason Free left was because her and Stephen did not get along. And apparently it all started in 2005 during the BET Awards. It started in 2005 during the BET Awards during the summer because she was supposed to show up at some promotional visits at a radio station, but she blew all her interviews off last minute. According to a staff member, Free said if she didn't have more than one security guard, she was not going to attend a public event. Free was asked in the interview, why did she leave? And Free says, I left because it was time for Free to go. It was five years of a great show. But, crazy update, fast forward to around 10 years later, the Ying Yang twins did an interview and they basically spilled the beans on why Free really got let go or why Free really allegedly quit 106. But I'll get that in a little bit. Months later after AJ left the show, AJ was asked about his departure in an interview 
AJ said, I had to realize BET didn't feel the same about me that I felt about them as far as a family. Looking back, it was all business. I considered them a family and they considered me just business. Decision that day, it wasn't like planned. It's not you made like, a decision oh, to cry? No, no, I mean, it's just to, stop. To, to stop. Oh, I was like... Because they want... I mean, literally, I was told that I could stay as long as I want to stay. As long mm -hmm. as I wanted that show, that show would have been mine. And, um, you know, I, I walked away. Free had walked away a little bit before me. And I was just like, it doesn't make sense. I'm not going to do this without her because mm -hmm. it was us. Um, and I just made the decision. Charlamagne like, and Amy would done. definitely stay here without me. Would they? Are you kidding me? Absolutely. Four days later, everybody was introduced to two temporary new hosts. Actress and Afro-Latina model, Julissa Bermudez and Big Tigger. Big Tigger was already popular and already had an underground following from Rhapsody. And they hosted the show for 11 months until BET could find a new host. Now, a lot of the fans really, really liked them and really enjoyed them and actually wanted things to be permanent. So after 11 months, after Julissa and Tigger hosted Bonuson Park, BET found two new hosts on July 6th. 2006, we were introduced to Roxy and Terrence. Roxy was born into Gubla, Honduras, but moved with her family to New Orleans, Louisiana. She is of Honduran and Chilean descent. Roxy got her start in the industry when she moved to Dallas, Texas to be a host on Urban Radio 97.9. That was basically my end. I did it all, putting up posters, lifting up heavy speakers. I mean, I'm lifting up speakers that are bigger than me, and I'm like, ah, like Shira, just putting these speakers up and, and just grinding. It was so hard. And 106 in Park, this is how it happened. There was a new new face search for BET. They were going to five different cities in the country. Over 5,000 people, everybody tried out. Well, in Chicago, they were only seeing the first thousand people. So everybody's like, you know, we got to get in line early. So I was in line at 7 o'clock the night before. And this is Chicago, all right? Nobody gave the memo to BET that it's cold in the Windy City. Like, stop playing. Like, it's freezing cold. I'm in there standing in line. Everybody else standing in line. I got these big old six-inch stiletto heels on, you know, boots. Just crazy freezing we stealing people's blankets and my whole thing was i gotta be one of the first 100 people that they saw so up there on my wall i got new faces search 79 because that was the number i was and that means a lot to me because i was just like i just want to be one of the first 100 that they see and from that hundred i just elevated to the next level and they ended up picking me um out of the thousands that they saw in Chicago. Terrence J was born in Queens, New York and got his start in the industry as a DJ at a local radio station called 102 Jams in Greensboro, North Carolina. He attended North Carolina A&T State University in 2004 and earned a degree in mass communications. In 2006, a friend told him about a casting for Once in the Park and he drained his entire savings account and flew to New York and got the job. It stuck with me. I mean, I know for the first two, three years, I, I was terrible, you know, and so I'm just happy that the, the network stuck with me and gave me, you know, a second chance. When Roxy and Terrence first appeared on 106, people fucking hated them. Like, they got so much hate. If you were in that era where Roxy and Terrence first got on Once in the Park, you know the vibe, and everybody was not feeling them. People really were very critical of Roxy, and many people dragged Roxy up and down in the dirt, said that she was ugly, said that she was scrawny, said that she looked like a duck. Aww. Somebody else says Roxy doesn't tell stories, she tells duck tales. Oh. <laughs> And this just in. Why aren't you looking at the computer when you? Why are you picking up your notebook? <laughs> no, like this, he's been working no, on this jokes is just like it. Jimmy no, Kimmel over here. This is just it. Roxy's gonna be sitting in for <laughs> Joe McHale this weekend, and the show's gonna be called Chicken Soup, just for the weekend. Okay. Yes. And this is my favorite from the Texas. Oh, but he's looking at his notebook. No, seriously, I had to write this down because this is great from the Texas. Okay. What do you call a BMW 6 Series when Roxy's sitting in it? What? A chicken coop. <laughs> 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 you are so mean and I love it. You lay low over That's the weekend, me. okay? Because Roxy's going to be after you. Listen, I've seen the movie Birds. I don't want no problems. <laughs> I don't want no problems. Personally, I like Roxy and Terrence. I thought they did a very good job for, throughout their entire seven years hosting the show. But after Roxy and Terrence left, I checked out. But anyways, a lot of people weren't feeling Terrence J at all because he was very goofy and overly energetic. People thought he was annoying and he was overly gushing every time he had the opportunity to interview a celebrity. People thought Roxy and Terrence just weren't a good dynamic and they weren't bad, 
they just weren't AJ and Free. Let's just put it that way. But eventually they won fans over it and people were very, very, very well adjusted to them because they didn't have a choice but to adjust to them. Once the Pack was the only place that you had to go watch music videos. But soon after the success, Rocky and Terrence got caught up in many scandals. The one scandal that everybody talks about still to this day is when Roxy and Terrence were allegedly messing around. Many people accuse them of messing around because people started to notice their awkward, strange energy. Like, Terrence would just start to say a lot of weird, funny shit, and Roxy was just awkwardly smiling, like she wanted to slap the shit out of him. How you know when it's spring? You got an example? You know it's spring when the ladies start showing the toes. You know no. it's spring. We're ready to legs. show the toes and the legs. And they shave the legs. You know, they the legs been hibernating for the whole winter, so they come out looking real like little grizzly bears. Remember your legs the other day? When I yeah, I yeah. tried to touch I tried to touch her leg and right. I almost lost my arm. It was crazy. It's all right, it's all good. Be a natural is the way to go. Exactly. Yeah. What's up, right. Monique? Anyway, twitter.com slash Roxy. Oh my gosh, you guys wanna know shut up, you're not Roxy. You guys wanna know what happened backstage just now? Terrence grabbed my ass backstage. Oh, no, I did not! Oh. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, you can't say In 2010, the rumors got worse when Roxy and Terrence had a few on live television. Okay. Okay. Just, anyway, nah, but, I mean, it's clear. We're and we, going back and the to thing, the thing, everybody can see. There's a, a teleprompter right there. It says Freestyle Friday at, at Gmail. Not at BT.com. So I like B. I love BT.com. I'm happy you represent for your network, but it, it's at Gmail. You might confuse. Someone. Like you, you guys see that again? I gotta say it one more time. Y'all see that? Okay. Freestyle Friday 106 at gmail.com. Yeah, can, matter of fact, can they bring back the uh, the thing at the bottom of the screen? Yeah, okay. Just so that people at home don't get twisted because you can't read today. Uh, number six video. Here's Birdman Lil Wayne. I run this, but I can read. Mints. Roxy needs breath. Mint. No? You don't? No? You do a little bit, though. Can we do that during the commercial break? What? It's not that bad, but it's not that good. Uh, we listen, got we got a new history making. That's my read, if you can't tell. A new history making number one video. You do your read over there, and I'm in the the not. I'm in the good zone. That's over how here. you feel today. Yeah, I mean, it's, I didn't do it. You did. Uh, look, we got more 106 of Park on the way. Let's get these breath mints. Right back. Yeah. Yo, why can't you have a body more like Sierra's, yo? Did y'all, fellas, did y'all see us? Yo. Why can't you have a body more like Nelly? True story. It's your turn. <laughs> Remember, don't miss Nas next week on I do have a body like... He'll stop by and discuss his very controversial new album, which drops on Tuesday. Plus, he has a lot of surprises in store, so we'll have some surprises for him as well. Do not miss it. Keep it locked. We got Dave, uh... David Banner. Don't you have some. David, David Banner's Banner. also going to be here next week. He's going to talk about his latest project, The Greatest Story Ever Told. So don't miss that as well, all right? Y'all keep it locked. More of Skinny Terrence on 106 Park. Next Friday, we're having auditions for Freestyle Friday. Now, for more information... Uh, let me give them the email address. The email address is freestylefriday at gmail.com. Put it on the bottom of the screen. It should be on the bottom. Of, yeah, there it goes. Freestylefriday at gmail.com. I just wanted to help you before you messed it up. I had it. I just in case you're going to mess it up. Freestylefriday, gmail.com. Make sure to hit us up. And you know what you got to do with that. All the best MCs in the country, you make sure to get at us right now. We're holding auditions in New York City. It's going to be off the hook, all right? Roxy won't be there. She won't mess you up while you're doing your thing. It's like that today, really? You really feeling some type of way? No, I'm just fine. No, I'm just... Real talk. Nah, it's good. It's going down. Go Rick Ross, yeah. Nelly, here I am. It's number two on the countdown, baby. Here I go. Let's do this. Some real big things right there. That video hit. Oh my bad. Yo, come up here, yo. I need a co-host or somebody. Hey, come here. You can be my new co-host right now. What's your name? Gabrielle. Where are you from? I'm from Hempstead. Hempstead. Give it up for her from Hempstead. Was I too hard on Roxy? Huh? I wasn't too hard on her, right? No. No. See, I was just playing around. So look, you're gonna be. I know you're gonna be my co-host, and some people want to act too sensitive with their jobs, all right? So we're gonna get into the number one video in the world right now. This joint hit number one four in four days. That means it's one of the fastest videos to rise to the top of our countdown in the history of BET's 106 and Park. Are you a fan of Lil Wayne? Yeah. Did you go cop his album? 
No, I didn't. You, uh, can you no, buy? Can we? So I'm going to. You're going to buy it right now. You want me to give you twelve dollars? Uh, no, I got it. We're going to buy. We're going to buy Lil Wayne's record right now. In the meantime, I want the rest of the world to check this out. Here's a Millie. It's the number one video on the countdown, girl. So people went crazy because Roxy literally walked off stage after introducing the countdown. People gave Terrence a lot of shit for this. People were just like, Terrence is unprofessional. Roxy probably turned his ugly ass down. He probably upset because Roxy didn't want him. People were talking about this on MySpace and all over Facebook. And it went viral on World Star Hip Hop and gained millions of views. After the backlash, Roxy was absent from the show for a couple of days. But there's more to that story that no one knows. Now the Roxy and Terrence rumor fucking around didn't get any better. It actually gaslighted even more as the show went on. Specifically because a huge scandal basically broke the entire internet. A rapper from Louisiana by the name Webby, some of y'all might know him from this song. So a year after Roxy and Terrence's incident, Webby threatened to beat up Terrence out of nowhere. People were very, very confused because it was like, wait, wasn't Webby just on the show not too long ago? So Webby ran to the media and he said in a viral video that he was going to slap the hell out of Terrence when he sees him. Hey, I'm beating hey, what, his bitch ass up. What you gonna do with Terrence again? I'm gonna beat his bitch ass up. Straight up. I'm no, beating God. him up. I'm beating him up. Nigga, you wanna act like a gangster on TV? Bitch, I'm beating your punk ass up. And that's on me and you. We don't need to go with no... This bitch that nigga probably... Hey, Terrence gonna run. Look, I know Terrence gonna run. 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 He ain't like this here. He on the way other side of the room. So you know how they act when 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 they act I told The video went viral all over world star hip hop and still to this day has millions of views on YouTube. But the reason why Terrence had him banned was because Webby came on the show to judge Freestyle Friday. Webby got a little cozy with Roxy and you can see in this picture that they were all hugged up. So Terrence got a lot of backlash for this and many people threatened to stop watching the show because at the time Webby was pretty popular. So Roxy did an interview and in that interview, she basically detailed exactly what really happened that day, what no one saw on TV. I think that any light, you have sisters, cousins, aunts, yeah. your mother. I love, I love her. You know, um, and any light that a woman feels that she was disrespected, and, and I get, I have thick skin, I don't, yeah. you know what I'm saying, but when you're at your job and somebody sexually harasses you yeah. in a manner that is very vulgar and disgusting, yeah. you know, I have no shame of sticking up for myself and telling you that you're improper right now. I'm at work, we're in a set, there's children around us, you know, you're, you're really out of line right now. And um, I think that people should more so applaud a woman sticking up for herself and the people around her for sticking up for herself than allowing that kind of behavior to happen. And I think that we allow that behavior to happen too much in our society and we don't put light on people being inappropriate and and it's okay ladies to speak up and say no I don't like to be spoken to in that manner you know there's a, a manner in which you speak to people and he disrespected me and I Terrence stood up for me I stood up for myself and the network would not allow anybody to come and disrespect their host no one really knows what exactly happened other than Roxy, Terrence, and Webby. But apparently Webby said to Roxy's ear that he wanted to do some sexual things to her and Roxy looked at it as sexual harassment and he was immediately escorted off stage. And to make matters worse and to put the icing on the cake, Roxy was also going through a crazy scandal where she was allegedly messing around with a married man and the premiere of Turks and Caicos. The premiere was actually married to the first lady, Lisa Ray. And this is pretty much what Lisa had to say. I don't even give a damn, to be honest. My thing is, respect me enough where I don't find out and you don't hurt your family. I'm not gonna go looking for it, I'm not an investigator. Do what you gotta do over there. Mm -hmm. But don't you dare bring it here to destroy something that you put on a pedestal, something that you vow sacred. Don't do that. Yeah. Protect your family, protect me. That's all I ask. When you saw the pictures of uh, 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 Roxy, was, I don't know if it was in your house or not, but in front of the Christmas tree, how did that, how did, what went through your mind? Actually, that Christmas tree was not in our house, that Christmas oh. tree was in his mother's house. Oh. 
And the pictures that I saw on the internet was in my backyard at my house. Mm -hmm. And so I say to that that I never invited her to my home and that I did not know that she knew my husband. So go figure. And she reached out to you? And said what? Oh, no. Sorry, my bad. I didn't know anymore. Not that she couldn't have known, but mm -hmm. here's why I did it. Would you like to hear from her? <laughs> I don't think it's important. My fight is not with her. Um, I'm divorced. It's over. So I have other priorities right now. She's a kid to me. So would you be on 106 and Park? Absolutely. Have they invited you? No, not yet. Why do you think not? I don't know. And here's the thing that I got a problem with that. You know, and it's, it's not the woman's fault. You know what I mean? It's definitely he put her in that position, you know? This is where I, I've had to come to grips with, with her. This is a historical position. Stop it. Mm -hmm. This is way bigger than you. For real. So for me, she's a kid to me. She's almost the age my daughter is. You know? Not only that, around that same time, Roxy got into a crazy scandal with 50 Cent after she said his album was trash. Forget that 50 Cent! It's garbage! <laughs> She got it right. Wait, see now she said it was garbage. No, I say it was garbage. I got it. Look, I'm going on the record right now. I challenge everybody. You get the Kanye album, you get the 50 Cent album. If you find more songs on the 50 Cent album than on the Kanye album, I will buy you any three albums that you want. The 50 is garbage. Okay, I won't co-sign the garbage because I will not be getting shot anytime. He aired her the hell out about all the people she slept with. Also spin the narrative that Roxy was sleeping with guests on the show. Her, uh, what's the girl name from 106 and Park? Roxy. Roxy, like, she, she said something crazy on a, on a tape, and, uh, at first, you know, my first reaction to it is, you know, I should probably tell people that, who she is, for real. Who that? Because she's like, worldstarhiphop.com. Like, like, I know, like, four people she slept with. Jesus. Damn down. You know what I mean? So, so it's like, it, it's, it's size that it's favoritism when you sit to the couch because of who, like, I don't have time to, to hang out with you, sleep with you to make you like me on the show. Right. You know what I mean? That's just not how I do things. And then if, if they, if they, you know, they have that energy to the point that it actually comes out. Like, I knew this been this way for a long time. It's just, it actually came out now. Like, yeah. people always see me responding. They don't actually see what takes place. So I guess you guys can understand and see why Roxy had a very nasty image and why a lot of people gravitated towards the Webby side. Terrence found a lot of success after the show and started to branch out on other things and kicked off his acting career in many appearances. He had his first appearance in the show The Game and then eventually had his big break in the movie Think Like a Man 1 and 2. Now here's where shit kind of flies off the handles. On May 29, 2012, Roxy and Terrence announced that they'd be leaving the show in the fall and that they'd be holding auditions and a global contest for a new host. Little did we all know, this was the beginning of the end. Thompson, King Cole, Shorty the Prince, Jazzy, Rodney, and Miss Mikey to show you why they deserve to be the new host of 106 and Park. Roxy and Terrence called the contest 106 The Search. And in order for people to enter, they had to email an audition tape to BET showing off their hosting skills. The contest was huge back then. Hey 106, it's your girl La, and the number one video is from Rico. That's why you guys should hire me as your next host of 106 in Park. I'm smart, I'm talented, I graduated from Rutgers University with a degree in journalism, plus I look good on the camera. I do say so myself. To the hottest countdown of hip hop and R&B video, right here on 106 and Park Live. Live show of 106 and Park. I am your host Tiara. I am here with your live this audience today. We got a big show for y'all. We got two fellas that's coming through. That's definitely here to make the ladies scream. We got your boy Chris Breezy and your boy Trey Songs and stuff. 106 and Park. The search take 176. I am the 106 and Park host. There is no free. Roxy who? I mean, BT came to me personally and they was like, you know what, TT? We got you. And that was the number three video. I bees in the trap. Be bees in the trap. Wait a minute, is that bees in here for real? No, for real. Is that bees? But anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Welcome back to 106 and Park. It's your boy Batista. We got a hot countdown today, but before we get into that, we got a new joint from an up and coming artist straight out of New York City. 
by the name of Crown Cobain with the track Bangin' Body. Even some of your favorite influencers to this day actually auditioned for 106 to search, like B. Simone and Mr. Guy Jokes. Hey guys, welcome back to BET's 106 in Park's Top 10 Live. I am your host, B. Simone, turning you on to all your favorite videos right here on 106. Tierra from BGC also auditioned. What's up, 106? It's your girl, Tierra, coming to you live from New York. The new number one video on the countdown that you guys voted for, one of my favorite videos as well. Two Chains between Drizzy Drake. No lie, no lie, no lie, yeah, yeah. Let's get it. Eventually, Roxy and Terrence picked their top seven finalists to compete on live TV a week later. And then, the following Monday, we were introduced to four new hosts of One of Sizzling Park. Four new hosts? Yeah, a lot of people weren't happy about that. The first host was Biracial Bow Wow. Yes, Biracial Bow Wow. I call Bow Wow Biracial Bow Wow because you guys know Bow Wow identifies as biracial. Because in case you guys didn't know, a couple years ago, Bow Wow considered himself mixed, which is why he can't speak on black issues, because black issues don't affect him because he's mixed. But anyways, that's another video. The next host was Shorty the Prince from St. Louis, Missouri, and his girlfriend at the time, Pajion, and a struggling upcoming female R&B singer, Miss Mikey. When Bow Wow was offered the job, he didn't have to audition. He got the job almost immediately because back in the early 2000s, him and Aaliyah were crowned Mr. and Mrs. 106 in Park because at the time, they were getting the most number ones, the most votes for highly requested to be played on 106 in Park. A lot of people also accused 106 in Park of the search of being rigged because it was kind of weird how Bow Wow didn't need to audition for it, which I understand because Bow Wow was a big name. And it was also kind of weird how Pajion and Shorty got the job, meanwhile they're a couple, and meanwhile they've done work with BET in the past. And also the other host, Miss Mikey, was an upcoming R&B singer and was known and had a following on MySpace. Miss Mikey was trying to make a name for herself already in the music industry, and when she got offered to do 106, she wanted to use it as a platform to get herself out there in the music industry. And like I came, they called me the first time to come and um, co-host the show with Roxy, and I didn't think much of it. You know, I, I started out doing music and pursuing music, so I just kind of figured they found me. You know, I, started up a little buzz. So I thought that they, you know, found me and was like, oh, I think she'll be a dope person to come and co-host with Roxy. But one turned into two times, which turned into three times, which turned into me being a part of the whole week of the seven finalists for the search. Now, the new hosts weren't really... The fans weren't getting jiggy with that shit. They weren't getting jiggy with the new hosts. The fans just felt like it was too much. There was too many people on the screen, and they felt like it took too much attention away from the actual show. And many people were just like... Why the fuck are there four people on the screen? Let me know if y'all watched it after Terrence and Roxy left because I checked out, like I said, after Roxy and Terrence left. The show just became all over the place and just wasn't as interesting as it used to be and the ratings did suffer. And after a couple of months, out of nowhere, the host, three of the hosts to be exact, were fired. They were let go. And because the ratings were struggling, eventually, BET decided to throw in a new host. One of the part threw in Angela Simmons, but 106 actually was working on getting a newer and better host. So Angela Simmons was temporary. And then they bought in Keisha Shante, the last and final host of 106 in Park. I'm pretty sure every single one of you guys know who Keisha Shante is. Yes, you know who Keisha Shante is because there's a whole song that Drake made about her that every single one of you guys know. I'm tired of that damn song. But yes, that song was actually dedicated to the host of Once in Park, the final host, Keisha Shantae. And Keisha Shantae and Drake, in case you guys didn't know, actually dated back in the early 2000s. Keisha Shantae was an R&B and pop singer in Canada. So if you're from Canada, you more than likely know who Keisha Shantae was. She was very similar to Aaliyah. But her success in the early 2000s was very short-lived due to a lot of complications with her label and her team. And then eventually, her career kind of plummeted and went downhill. But that was really the beginning of the end and things ended up hitting the fan. Now, of course, they did have a lot of viral moments. Like that one time that boy came on and trolled the entire set. Hey, homie. Oh, what the? What is happening? Hey, man. Security! Security! 
video actually went viral and this boy was actually identified as Tommy Alden. He actually went viral a couple months ago for assaulting his grandma. Oh. And of course, there was that infamous scene where August Alcina went the fuck off on Keisha. Is there any chance that two talented brothers will bury the hatchet? So you're just going to go against the grain <laughs> and go against everything that I, I just I just told y'all not to ask me that shit when I got up in here. Okay. Although Keisha brought a lot of attention to the show, her time on 106 started to be very short-lived. Keisha actually stopped showing up to work, and many people started to notice that Keisha was very absent. She would be absent for weeks, and many people took notice and started to realize, aw oh, shit, here we go again, they're gonna bring in an 80th host. And everybody was making memes and making a whole joke out of it on Twitter when Keisha Shante stopped appearing. Keisha Shante was trying to revive her imaginary career, and was trying to revive her underground audience. The crazy part about Keisha Shante hosting the show was she was originally supposed to be the host, but the reason she didn't get to host the show was because she was actually on a work visa and it had expired. Because mind you, she is Canadian. And since her work visa was expired, she couldn't work in the US and get paid. So she had to get that figured out and then Pajian, Shorty, and Miss Mikey were actually meant to be temporary in the first place. So due to them being scared of the show probably plummeting, they wanted to, instead of having Keisha Shante on the show because she started flaking, they decided to have a celebrity guest host every single week because they thought it would be interesting and it would bring in ratings. So every week 106 had a new celebrity guest host. Keisha Shante was asked in the interview why she eventually stopped coming to 106 and she never really spoke on it, but in 2017 she said, and then doing it, it was funny. I kind of entered the show uninspired by making music. And then within a month of being on that show, I was just dying to get back to work. Now here's where the show really plummeted. Here's the big conspiracy about why the show plummeted after Keisha Shantae started to be absent. So after Karuchi started hosting the show, after Karkuchi started hosting the show, the show kind of was ceased to exist. It's believed the reason why the show really ended was because... I'm just gonna play this clip and let y'all be the judge. But here are the top six things Blue Ivy thought about the VMAs with number six. I really did wake up like this because my parents never comb my hair. Oh, uh, uh, I can't. <laughs> Sorry, Blue Ivy. <laughs> the fucking audacity. The Beehive was not playing with that ass and they went full force on Karuchi.
To clear the air, Karuchi went on Instagram and said this to clear her name. I apologize on Tuesday with a heartfelt message on Instagram. I apologize to any and everyone who felt offended in any way by the comments made by BET executed through me. I would never disrespect anyone's child in any way and anyone who knows me knows that I love Beyonce. The show's host, Sean Moss, defended the star in an Instagram video saying, We all make mistakes, but then the rapper went on to say this. Now, a brother like me? Would I read this shit? Hell no. <clears throat> nope. Mm -mm. Uh -uh. She basically said, It's not my fault. It was on a teleprompter. I've never been on live TV before. It's not my fault. Don't come for me. If you feel offended, I'm sorry you feel offended. Like, bitch. And people were still going in on her ass. So people were going in on her ass, and Stephen G. Hill, the creator of One of Us Park, had to come on and publicly apologize on his own Twitter. The show went into hiatus, and then a month later, BET announced that it would be canceling the show. The internet went in on Beyonce, because many people accused her of being the reason why the show really ended. Because let's be realistic here, Beyonce be stopping bags. Y'all want to know who stops bags? That's the real bag stopper, Beyonce, okay? She ruined Carrie Hilson's career, and she stopped many people's bags in the past. So, I'm not surprised that Beyonce had nothing to do with it, but I don't fucking blame her. She was probably on the phone like, uh, yeah, uh, BET? Um, I will no longer be supporting y'all uh, until y'all cancel 106 because I can't get jiggy with this shit. They coming for blue and shit. Beyonce had nothing to say. Beyonce don't ever speak on controversy. Anytime her name is in some shit, she don't ever speak on it. <laughs> After 106 ended, like, Bow Wow is out of the job was basically trending on Twitter. And many people were making memes saying that Bow Wow needs to apply at Waffle House. He needs to apply at Checkers because his ass is out of the job now. Because in case you guys didn't know, Bow Wow was in a huge scandal where he was allegedly not paying child support for his daughter. <laughs> announced by BET that One of the Park was supposed to return, but it was only supposed to be a digital show. It was supposed to go to YouTube or on other streaming platforms, but it never happened. Honestly, all good things come to an end, and One of the is one of those good things. You know, One of the Park is one of those things that should just be left in the past. It will forever be the gateway for all of us, and it helped all of us escape the real world issues we all faced when we were all growing up, and we needed 106. It's unfortunate that the kids these days will never experience that. Now for the where are they now? What happened to the guests? What happened to the hosts? Y'all ever wondered what really happened to the hosts? What the, what are they doing now? What happened to AJ and Free? Why did AJ and Free really quit the show? Like some exclusive things that I found out. Why did Roxy and Terrence leave the show? What are Roxy and Terrence up to now? What is Shorty, Pageon, and Miss Mikey up to? What are they up to after 106? What where, where are they now? Of course, I gotta start with Free. 106 would have been nothing without Free. Free has been out of the spotlight ever since abruptly leaving 106 out of nowhere with no explanation at all. Other than her interview with Vibe magazine, Free never cared to speak on why she left the show. But, you know, after the show, she did say, It was five years of a great show. Business is business. They have a plan to keep that business surviving. They're going to do what they have to do. I've never had an issue with BET and my check. Never. I had great mentors there, but I wasn't afraid to do something else. That was an interview Free did after leaving 106. Now, let's relay back to the whole Ying Yang Twins interview. Y'all remember when I said Ying Yang Twins spilled the beans about why she was let go or quit 106? We're going one more for the road. Damn, she just told you. Ooh, free. Oh, yeah. <laughs> free, 106 and Paul. Free and AJ. Free lost her job in BET behind that bridge. Yeah. I, I, she said her mom wrote her off quick fucking with her behind her laying that verse. I mean, and the only yeah. thing she said, she said, this a jam. I want a verse on here. So we can, okay, it's music. I don't really know what the fuck they're talking about because the Yingy twins are a little, um, cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs, like they're missing a couple screws, so I don't really know what the fuck the Yankees were talking about, but all I do know is, what I kind of concluded or put together was, she might have been let go from the show, because since it is a family show, she did do a song with them, and I'm pretty sure you guys remember their infamous song, Whisper, so Free hopped on the remix of that song, and her verse was nasty as fuck.
But I still don't get why she would be let go from most of the party. She said she left on her own terms, but hey, we'll never know. As of now, Free keeps to herself and her personal life is very, very private. There's no any news or information about who she's been dating, if she has a husband, or if she even has children. Free lost her mother to cancer, sadly, in 2010 and created a foundation to keep her mom's legacy alive called Team Cancer Free. And my team, Team Cancer Free, which I started in honor of my mom who passed away from breast cancer, is walking again for the 10th time. Um, we also have some great news. We just became a 501c3. So I'm super excited about uh, being able to get some mammogram uh, trucks and vans in the city to do some outreach in the community, um, to teach women how to do their own self breast exams, and also um, just to raise awareness against breast cancer. So if you guys want to support, or if you're in Boston and you want to walk with us, please feel free to come. It's all a big family day, and you can find the link in my bio. Okay, I hope to see you there. If you got any questions, email teamcancerfree at gmail.com. Bye. She currently uses her platform to raise money and raise awareness about cancer, and she uses her platform to break strides against breast cancer. In 2011, she had her own radio show with Big Tigger and started a YouTube channel titled Freeze World. She even opened a website called Freeze World where she would be blogging, talking about her personal life, and even talking about celebrity news. But unfortunately, she hasn't really posted on there and pretty much done much on there. She doesn't really post on her YouTube channel, but occasionally she documents herself staying healthy. Free is currently 51, and she looks great. Now we're going to talk about AJ Calloway. After AJ decides to leave 106 and park, it opens a lot of doors for him. He's still, to this day, very successful, a successful event planner. He travels the world and even has his own scholarship program. AJ is married to Dion Walker and they currently have three kids together. In 2005, he signed a massive deal with Extra Athlete 106 and became a news reporter and correspondent for them, but was fired as of three months ago. Yes, he literally got fired back in July of this year after being with them since 2005. The reason Extra fired him was because he was in a massive scandal where three women have come forth from the past and have accused AJ of sexually assaulting them back in the day. The current allegations are currently being investigated and AJ has denied all allegations. Roxy found a lot of success after 106 and managed to stay out of trouble. She got signed to work for Entertainment Tonight as a reporter and she worked with them for five years. That she even won an Emmy for Outstanding Host and became a permanent host on Day Naked. Roxy is now a model and to this day still travels the world and occasionally does work for E! News. She's currently 35 years old and fun fact, on the final episode of 106 in Park in 2014, Roxy and Terrence and the entire ever host came on the show and they all said their goodbyes to the show. And Roxy and Terrence finally spoke on that infamous day where she walked off stage because they were allegedly messing around. And you were missing for like two weeks. They were like, oh, they're feuding. So what is the real story? You know I had to get the tea. What's go what happened there? You want to tell it? So... Terrence and I, when we first started 106 at Park, we hadn't taken a vacation. What was it, four, three years, E? Four years? We never took off a day when we first started 106. So, I'm throwing you under the bus on this one, Steven. This was all your idea. Said that we should stage an argument with you and Terrence because nobody would understand you guys taking off. So, yeah, that moment that has been talked about for so many years was fake. The whole time. <laughs> So I, I've, I've always regretted that moment. I always wish that that never happened, but um, it happened, and, and people always yeah. talked about it. But uh, it was it was scripted. A lot of the stuff it was, was scripted. scripted. We did it, it was for fake. Fun. Now Terrence, we gotta talk about Terrence. Terrence looks great. He hasn't aged at all, and he recently hosted this year's VMAs red carpet. Also a main cast member on the show Scream. Terrence is currently the host for the reality dating show Are You the One. Miss Mikey has the most interesting story of them all because she completely shift careers. She actually quit music to focus on herself. She got her real estate license and then she ended up getting married to her husband Cooper two years ago and she gave birth to their son Cash about a couple months ago. Shorty the Prince is still a rapper and he no longer goes under the name of Shorty the Prince. Before the show he was a rapper and he was actually doing radio for around 10 years. Shorty is still a radio personality to this day and is still an aspiring rapper and doesn't really care to be famous. We like to travel and they like to pivot. Hey, you one in a million. Hey, 
got your own figures, don't trip off these niggas, and that's the difference, ayy. Him and Paige Young are no longer dating. Paige Young is still to this day working as a radio personality in LA, and she's also an actress. Paige Young is working on her acting career, and she currently does skits on Instagram. She also has a YouTube channel where she posts skits every week. So if you guys are interested, check out Paige Young's YouTube channel. Then there was Bow Bow, aka Shad Moss. Bow Wow is now a reality star, and he found not that much success after the show. You know, he did do many seasons of growing up hip hop. Other than that, Bow Wow is definitely still working, and you can catch him on Instagram, acting a damn fool, and on commercial flights. Now, last but not least, we have the 80 millionth fucking host of One Season Park. We have Keisha Shantae. Keisha Shantae, after One Season Park, tried to pursue her music career. She tried to pursue a music career, but things didn't really work out in her favor. Although Keisha's music career didn't go anywhere, she's still working. She's currently a correspondent for Entertainment Tonight Canada. 106 was very needed in the culture. Like, 106, no matter what anybody says, was that show. Everybody, no matter where you went, was watching it. And it was just one of those things that just brought everybody together. Like, there was nothing negative about the platform. Free and AJ were never with the scandals. You know, Roxy and Tarrant did have a couple of scandals, but they did manage to keep everything positive. Now, there has been some talks of people trying to reboot One of the Park, although One of the Park did make a comeback at the BET experience in 2016. Many people have been talking to, you know, maybe revamp it in a different way, or even, you know, bring it to YouTube. But in my opinion, no, bitch. Leave that shit the fuck alone. But yeah, once the part needs to be left in the past, classics need to remain classics, they need to be left in the damn past. Leave that shit alone. They're already trying to revamp TRL, and they're also trying to bring DC Young Fly and Justina Valentine as the current host of TRL. But it, it's, it's not really the same, and it's only on YouTube. So since a lot of us had nothing to do at home on a school night, all we pretty much did was rely on 106 Park to keep us entertained and then watch the movie that played after 106. So yeah, that's pretty much it. This was a long ass fucking video. My ass hurts just from sitting on this damn chair. But honestly, this video had to be made and I really wanted to give all the fans of 106 Park closure about what really happened and why the show ended abruptly, why AJ and Free left, why Roxy and Terrence left. And what I got for this video, People should have comment down below what shows you guys want me to review next. A lot of you guys want me to review The Tyra Show. Many of you guys said American Next Top Model. A lot of you guys said Smart Guy, Sister Sister, Parenthood. I really want to know what y'all think. So people should leave your comment section down below. Classics only. And yeah, like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you guys thought about this video and what I forgot or what you guys want me to mention next time. And yeah, that's that. Choice out this bitch. And I'm going to bed and I'm going to enjoy my corn. It's um, reciprocity. See, no one loves you more than me. And no one ever will. You are how I eat this for. Is this just a silly game? My bad, I was short. That forces you to act this way. Forces you to scream my name. Then pretend that you can't stay. Tell me who I have to be to get some reciprocity. See, no one loves you more than me, and no one ever will. No matter how I think we grow, you always seem to let me go. It ain't working, it ain't working, it ain't working. And when I try to walk away, you hurt yourself to make me stay. This is crazy. This is crazy. There for me, there for me. I want you care for me, care for me, care for me. I want you die for me, die for me, die for me. I want you care for me, care for me, care for me, yeah.